Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. All right, today is Thursday, and a reminder that our uh, title sponsor is uh, Able Auctions. Art Delaney's OK Tyron Langley inbox is blowing up with Exploded. this whole uh, FOMO situation. Let's see what Jeff thinks of it. Jeff Patterson joining us now from Sakaris and Price and the Rinkwide Podcast. Back from Kelowna, how are you? Uh, I'm excellent. Yeah, I had a good little uh, rip uh, to the Okanagan, a couple of rounds of golf. The uh, sun was shining there, and uh, back to reality here. Uh, in Vancouver. Uh, to, to mix two of the topics you touched on in the opening, mm. let me say, I, I'm excited. I'm going to the Lions game on Saturday. I've got tickets. I'm going to sit in the stands. I'm going to be a fan in the stands. Uh, I'm looking forward to just seeing the event to support uh, everything that the BC Lions uh, organization has done to generate excitement. I want to see Nathan Rourke. I want to see Lucky Whitehead. And there is an element of FOMO. Like if everybody else in the city is going on Monday morning, I don't want to be the guy that wasn't there. So I swear to God that FOMO is one of the reasons I am going to the BC Lions game on Saturday night, and I'm looking forward to it. Okay, sure, but you just heard of FOMO in the last hour. You never, you weren't aware of that abbreviation before this. I got teenage kids, Donnie, and uh, I. So do I. I was aware. Uh, that doesn't make me any cooler or hipper than you guys, but <laughs> FOMO was uh, definitely something I was aware of, and. Here's another thing. You only live once. So I don't know if you guys are on to like, YOLO. YOLO. Uh, yeah, I kind of knew that one. Yeah. Well, how could you know YOLO and not know FOMO? <laughs> I, I, IDK. I don't know. I, I, like, uh, I'm not really sure. <laughs> yo, yo, I don't know why I've heard of a YOLO, but FOMO, I just... Uh, but, Fom you know, here, here's the thing, Jeff, is I haven't heard of FOMO. Yeah. And, and Ryan gets upset with me. Yeah. Like that, and, and that, and that, maybe that's part of my problem. It's not just the overuse of abbreviations. Is that if you don't know it, it's like, it's, oh my god, you're show, an awful person. Yeah, and Ryan thinks we're going to be in the next Jurassic Park movie, anyway. So, well, he's not the only one. Um, do you think this is all about One Republic, Jeff? And you, you mentioned that you're, 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 you're in the business. You're in the sports reporting business. You know about the Lions. But do you think what we're seeing at BC Play Saturday or what we will see, is that all about uh, one republic and maybe the way Amar Doman has come across? Yeah, I don't know if it's one republic in and of itself, but the idea of doing more than just running a football game. Like, yeah. you know, giving more, it's a value added, it's a concert. So, you know, One Republic's not going to be uh, the choice of everybody, but I do think that there will be a, an element of people that, uh, again, FOMO, uh, they know that this is a big deal going <laughs> on in town on Saturday night. Like, it's become an event. And I, like, I applaud Amar Doman and all that he's done. And I, I look at the social media work that the BC Lions are doing, and it's terrific. And, and I kind of feel like the Lions have raised their game and I think the city is willing to give them an opportunity. And it does come back ultimately to the product they put on the field. But if you get eyeballs in and bums in the seats that haven't been to a Lions game in years and it sort of turned their back on the CFL, if you can get them back and then the product interests them, you know, mm -hmm. they're going to be repeat customers. So uh, I applaud all that the Lions have done. I think that, uh, look, we're talking BC Lions football here I on know. your show. I know. Canada I know. soccer Alfonso Davies is playing in this city, and we're talking BC Lions a couple days out. Like, credit to them. They've uh, done an awful lot of good work here, and I do think that it's building to something on Saturday night. And, again, whether it's one republic or had it been another act, I don't think that necessarily mattered. But it's just this idea that – you're giving people more for their ticket. You're trying to build this into something uh, bigger than it usually would be. I mean, a home opener in any sport is a big deal, especially when you're coming out of a pandemic the way that the, the Lions are. And so they do have to work to get a younger demographic in and to yeah. get people that haven't been exposed to the Canadian Football League. And if it means bringing in a, a rock act or maybe they try a different band and a different genre of music at some other point, uh, but I salute them. Uh, absolutely applaud the Lions for all that they have done to drum up this business, to get some people interested and generate a buzz that hasn't been there, quite frankly, around this BC Lions team in quite some time. So uh, looking forward to Saturday night. And let me be the first to say it. It's important that the Lions play well and that the game is entertaining. Let me be the first to say it, Rick. That's a shot of me, Jeff. Okay. Uh, hockey. If you, if you don't mind, we've talked golf, a little bit of soccer, a whole lot of football. Uh, let's talk uh, hockey. Um, what do you think, the, and this is going to be the focus of our poll question, what do you think uh, the Canucks are most likely to do with that 15th uh, uh, 
draft pick, 15th overall uh, pick. Stand pat, package it to move up, or maybe do an NFL Seahawks-like move and move down to gather more picks. Yeah, I'm on the record, Donnie, is thinking that they should probably entertain that last notion yeah. of uh, looking to acquire more assets. They don't have a second rounder already in this draft. I don't know if a team below them would be willing to part with a second rounder to move up a couple of spots, but they need a first round pick. They've gone two years here without a first rounder. We've talked at length about the lack of prospects in the pool. Where do you find elite level talent? It's at the top end of the draft. So they're sitting 15th. And we've also seen this. By the time you get to the 15th slot in any NHL draft, there's usually a couple of teams that have gone off the board. Uh, so you know you may have uh, one or two players that you value a little higher that have managed to slip. If that's the case, if there's a player there that they absolutely uh, want to get their hands on and he's available at 15, then draft him. But uh, if players that they have targeted have gone by the wayside or off the board at that point, I think you absolutely explore all options and really is the difference between the 15th pick and the 19th pick uh, likely to be a whole lot different? Probably not. Uh, every draft is a little bit different, but I, I do think that the Vancouver Canucks uh, should entertain that idea of staying in the first round. I, I think it's important. I don't want them trading that 15th pick to a team that's out of the first round now and then the Canucks dropping down, even though they would get uh, assets for it. I still think they need a first round pick after peddling uh, their last two. So uh, we'll see where it goes. And I just love the fact that uh, we're inside a month now from that National Hockey League draft in Montreal. Like it's just about go mm -hmm. time. Obviously, we're going to have to go uh, through the Stanley Cup final, but there is so much to be done, uh, not just the Vancouver Canucks, but around the National Hockey League. I can't remember a time where there have been more coaches and more coaching vacancies to be filled. And I think that most of those teams. Uh, we're going to want to have their man in place, certainly by free agencies, as they can you know, sell their system and their plan to uh, prospective players. So these next six weeks, I think, are going to be uh, wild on the National Hockey League front. And I do think the Vancouver Canucks are going to be in the middle of uh, a fair bit of that with the, you know, the long list of things that they have to get accomplished here. So really looking forward to what's to come between now and now. I am free agency. Uh, Jeff, one of the things coming to Vancouver as an assistant coach, uh, the Canucks have talked to Mike Yo. Uh, obviously, they're working together, uh, the Canucks management and Bruce, to get a new assistant coach. Uh, what kind of assistant uh, would you be looking for right now for the Canucks? Well, they may need a couple of assistants. This yeah, is the report well, out this morning that Brad Shaw uh, has been in. Blackhawks. Yeah. Uh, and good for him. I mean, this is a guy that he had a little bit of interim head coaching duties with the Islanders way back when, but otherwise is just regarded as one of the best assistant coaches in the National Hockey League. And I'm not surprised with the work that he has done, uh, not just here in Vancouver for a year, but you go back to Columbus, St. Louis before that. You know, he has worked with young defensemen, Alex Petrangelo, uh, Seth Jones, who, of course, uh, was in Columbus when Bradshaw was there, now in Chicago. So there's a tie there, Zach Wierenski. And not a surprise that Quinn Hughes had the turnaround season that he did, and a lot of it's on Quinn Hughes himself. But I think Bradshaw certainly helped. Uh, I know Bruce Boudreaux, and I remember asking Bruce, like, you know, prior to working together, did you have any relationship with Brad Shaw? And he said he he knew him to see him. Uh, you know, they're both kind of hockey lifers, and so they've traveled in the same circle. But he he really didn't have a relationship. But boy, did he have high praise for Brad Shaw and the work that he did, and the attention to detail. And you look at the penalty killing, how uh, it started to take off in the second half of the season, and what was an absolute weakness of this hockey club became one of its strengths by the end of the year. And Brad Shaw had his fingerprints on that. And Bruce Boudreau allowed Brad Shaw to run a number of practices whenever they were working on defensive drills. It was Brad Shaw was the guy that was out there barking uh, the instructions and, and conducting business and, and Bruce Boudreau was off to the side. So I think that uh, Bruce Boudreau values Brad Shaw. I think that would be a loss to the organization, uh, but you never want to stand in the way of a guy if he can land a, a head coaching job in the National Hockey League. So yeah, the question will be how many assistant coaches ultimately are the Vancouver Canucks going to be in the market for? And when I heard Mike Yo's name, uh, look, I have no issues if the Vancouver Canucks could land a, a guy with head coaching experience, not one, not two, three stops as a head coach of the National Hockey League. So uh, we see that around the NHL. A lot of guys that were former head coaches, uh, you know, whether it's uh, the fact that they can't get a new head, another mm -hmm. head coaching job or uh, they want to stay in the NHL rather than dropping down levels of hockey. Uh, a lot of former head coaches become assistant coaches. And I just don't think you can ever have too much knowledge and experience on your bench. So uh, it wouldn't surprise me if uh, they had some lengthy discussions with a guy like Mike Yo. Will they land on him? You know, is he coming to Vancouver? We don't know, but that name certainly is out there. So again, when I talk about all the things that the Vancouver Canucks have to do here between now 
and the middle of summer, certainly rounding out that coaching staff, firming up that coaching staff uh, is on the list. And now Brad Shaw, a little bit of a wild card just to see where, you know, what his future holds. You'll join us next, uh, uh, next week, right? Uh, I wouldn't miss it. Uh, there's this massive fear of missing out on uh, there, there, everything that goes there, out. On, there you on, go. With this, pro- with uh, this program. So, a, lot yes. of our, a lot of our listeners and viewers have FOMO. They don't want to miss a, a Jeff Patterson. Uh, Jeff, uh, C-U-L-P. See you later, pal. Oh, I wasn't sure where you were going with that one. I was, I was a little worried with the first two letters there. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff, thanks for this. Appreciate it. All right, guys. Okay, thanks.